Barley Hordium vulgar, a member of the grass family, is a major cereal grain grown in temperate climates globally. It was one of the first cultivated grains, particularly in Eurasia as early as 10,000 years ago. Barley has been used as animal fodder, as a source of fermentable material for beer and certain distilled beverages, and as a component of various health foods. It is used in soups and stews, and in barley bread of various cultures. Barley grains are commonly made into malt in a traditional and ancient method of preparation. In 2016, barley was ranked fourth among grains in quantity produced 141 million tons behind maize, rice and wheat. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The Old English word for barley was bear, which traces back to Proto-Indo-European and is cognate to the Latin word farina, flour. The direct ancestor of modern English, barley, in Old English was the derived adjective berlic, meaning of barley. The first citation of the form berlic in the Oxford English Dictionary dates to around 966 CE, in the compound word berlic croft. The underived word bear survives in the north of Scotland as beer, and refers to a specific strain of six-row barley grown there. The word barn, which originally meant, barley house, is also rooted in these words. Biology Barley is a member of the grass family. It is a self-pollinating, diploid species with 14 chromosomes. The wild ancestor of domesticated barley, Hordium vulgar subsp. Spontaneum, is abundant in grasslands and woodlands throughout the fertile crescent area of Western Asia and Northeast Africa, and is abundant in disturbed habitats, roadsides and orchards. Outside this region, the wild barley is less common and is usually found in disturbed habitats. However, in a study of genome-wide diversity markers, Tibet was found to be an additional center of domestication of cultivated barley. Topic. Domestication Wild barley H. Spontaneum, is the ancestor of domestic barley H. Vulgar, and harbors distinctive genes, alleles and regulators with potential for resistance to abiotic or biotic stresses to cultivated barley and adaptation to climatic changes. Wild barley has a brittle spike, upon maturity, the spikelets separate, facilitating seed dispersal. Domesticated barley has non-shattering spikes, making it much easier to harvest the mature ears. The non-shattering condition is caused by a mutation in one of two tightly linked genes known as BT1 and BT2. Many cultivars possess both mutations. The non-shattering condition is recessive, so varieties of barley that exhibit this condition are homozygous for the mutant allele. Each plant gets a set of genes from both parents, so two copies of each gene are in every plant. If one gene copy is a non-working mutant, but the other gene copy works, the mutation has no effect. Only when the plant is homozygous with both copies of the gene as non-working mutants does the mutation show its effect by exhibiting the non-shattering condition. Domestication in barley is followed by the change of key phenotypic traits at the genetic level. Little is known about the genetic variation among domesticated and wild genes in the chromosomal regions. Topic. Two-row and six-row barley Spikelets are arranged in triplets which alternate along the rotches. In wild barley and other old-world species of hordium, only the central spikelet is fertile, while the other two are reduced. This condition is retained in certain cultivars known as two-row barleys. A pair of mutations one dominant, the other recessive result in fertile lateral spikelets to produce six-row barleys. Recent genetic studies have revealed that a mutation in one gene, VRS1, is responsible for the transition from two row to six row barley. Two row barley has a lower protein content than six row barley, thus, a more fermentable sugar content. High protein barley is best suited for animal feed. Malting barley is usually lower protein. Low grain nitrogen, usually produced without a late fertilizer application which shows more uniform germination, needs shorter steeping, and has less protein in the extract that can make beer cloudy. Two-row barley is traditionally used in English ale-style beers. Six-row barley is common in some American lager-style beers, especially when adjuncts such as corn and rice are used, whereas two-row malted summer barley is preferred for traditional German beers. 
Topic: Hollis barley. Hollis or naked barley, Hordium vulgar lvar. Nudum hook f is a form of domesticated barley with an easier to remove hull. Naked barley is an ancient food crop, but a new industry has developed around uses of selected hullus barley to increase the digestible energy of the grain, especially for swine and poultry. Hullus barley has been investigated for several potential new applications as whole grain, and for its value-added products. These include bran and flour for multiple food applications. Topic. Classification. In traditional classifications of barley, these morphological differences have led to different forms of barley being classified as different species. Under these classifications, two-row barley with shattering spikes wild barley is classified as Hordium spontaneum K. coke. Two-row barley with non-shattering spikes is classified as H. disticum L, six-row barley with non-shattering spikes as H. vulgar L, or H. hexastichum L, and six-row with shattering spikes as H. agricrithon aberg. Because these differences were driven by single gene mutations, coupled with cytological and molecular evidence, most recent classifications treat these forms as a single species, H. vulgar L. Topic. Cultivars Vocabularidin, acronym for deoxynevalenol, a toxic byproduct of fusarium head blight, also known as vomitoxin. Heading date, a parameter in barley cultivation. Lodging, the bending over of the stems near ground level. Newtons, a designation for a variety with a lax ear, as opposed to a rectum with an erect ear. QCC, a pathotype of stem rust. Puccinia graminis f. sp. Tritici. Rachilla, the part of a spikelet that bears the florets, the length of the rachilla hairs is a characteristic of barley varieties cultivars azure, a six-row, blue allure one malting barley released in 1982, it was high yielding with strong straw, but was susceptible to loose smut. Beacon, a six-row malting barley with rough ons, short rachilla hairs and colorless allure one, it was released in 1973, and was the first North Dakota State University NDSU barley that had resistance to loose smut. Beer, a six-row barley, is currently cultivated mainly on 5 to 15 hectares of land in Orkney, Scotland. Two additional parcels on the island of Isla, Scotland, were planted in 2006 for Brookladdy Distillery. Betzes, an old German two-row barley, was introduced into North America from Krakow, Poland, by the United States Department of Agriculture USDA. The Montana and Idaho Agricultural Experiment Stations released Betzes in 1957. It is a mid-short, medium-strength strawed, mid-season maturing barley. It has a mid-size to large kernels with yellow allure ones. Betzes is susceptible to loose and covered smuts, rusts, and scald. Bowman, a two-road, smooth-on variety, was jointly released by NDSU and USDA in 1984 as a feed barley, spring variety developed in North Dakota. It has good test weight and straw strength. It is resistant to wheat stem rust, but is susceptible to loose smut and barley yellow dwarf virus. Celebration, a variety developed by the Barley Breeding Program at Bush Agricultural Resources, was released in 2008. Through a collaborative agreement between the NDSU Foundation Seedstocks NDFSS project and Bush Agricultural Resources, all Foundation Seed of Celebration barley will be produced and distributed by the NDFSS. Celebration has excellent agronomic performance and malt quality. It is a Midwestern variety, well adapted for Minnesota, North Dakota, Idaho, and Montana, with medium early maturity, medium early heading, medium short height, mid lax head type, rough ons, short rachilla hairs, and colorless allure one, moderately resistant to septoria and net blotch. It has improved reaction to fusarium head blight and consistently lower dawn content. Centennial, a Canadian variety, was developed from the cross of Lenta X Sinalta by the University of Alberta. It is a two-row, relatively short, stiff-strawed, late-maturing variety. The kernel is midlong with yellow allure one. It was released as a feed barley. Campana, an American variety, was developed from a composite cross by the Idaho and Montana Agricultural Experiment Stations in cooperation with the USDA's Plant Science Research Division. It was released by Montana in 1941. 
Campana is a two-row variety with moderately weak straw, midshort with mid-season maturity. The kernels are long and wide with yellow alorone. This variety is resistant to loose smut and moderately resistant to covered smut. Conlin, a two-row barley, was released by NDSU in 1996. Test weight and yield are better than Bowman. Yield is equal to Stark, Conlin heads earlier than Bowman and shows good heat tolerance by kernel plumpness. It is resistant to powdery mildew and net blotch, but is moderately susceptible to spot blotch. It is prone to lodging under high-yield growing conditions. It appears best adapted to western North Dakota and adjacent western states. Diamond, a Czech high yield, is a short height, mutant variety created with X rays. Dixon, a six row, rough ond variety, was released by NDSU in 1965. It had good straw strength and was resistant to stem rust, but susceptible to loose smut. Dixon had more resistance to prevalent leaf spot diseases than trophy, larker, and trail. It was similar to trophy in heading date, plant height, and straw strength. It had less plumpness than trophy and larker, but more than trail and kindred. Drummond, a six-row malting variety, was released by NDSU in 2000. It has white allure one, long rachilla hairs and semi-smooth ons. Drummond has better straw strength than current six-row varieties. Heading date is similar to robust and plant height is similar to stander. It is resistant to spot blotch and moderately susceptible to net blotch. However, its net blotch resistance is better than any current variety. Fusarium head blight reaction is similar to that of robust. It is resistant to prevalent races of wheat stem rust, but is susceptible to pathotype PGTQCC. Drummond is on the American Malting Barley Association's list of recommended varieties. In two years of plant scale evaluation, Drummond was found satisfactory by Anheuser Busch, Inc. and Miller Brewing. Excel, a six row, white allure one malting barley, was released by Minnesota in 1990. Shorter in height than other six-row barleys grown at that time, it is high-yielding with medium-early maturity, moderately strong straw, smooth ons, and long rachilla hairs. It has high resistance to stem rust and moderate resistance to spot blotch, but is susceptible to loose smut. Malting traits are equal or greater than Morix with plum kernel percentage lower than robust. Foster, a six-row, white allure one malting barley, was released by NDSU in 1995. About one day earlier and slightly shorter than Robust, it is higher yielding than Morix, Robust, and Hazen. Straw strength is similar to Excel and Stander, but better than Robust. It is moderately susceptible to net blotch, but resistant to spot blotch. Protein is 1.5% lower than Robust and Morix. Glen, a six-row, white allure one variety, was released by NDSU in 1978. Glen was resistant to prevalent races of loose and covered smut with better resistance to leaf spot diseases than larker. It matured about two days earlier than larker and yielded about 10% more than larker and beacon. Golden Promise, an English semidwarf, is a salt-tolerant, mutant variety created with gamma rays used to make beer and whiskey. Hazen, a six-row, smooth-on, white allure one feed barley, was released by NDSU in 1984. Hazen heads two days later than Glen. It is susceptible to loose smut. Highland barley is a crop cultivated on the Tibetan Plateau. Kindred was released in 1941 and developed from a selection made by S.T. Lycan, a Kindred, North Dakota farmer. It was a six-row, rough-on, medium-early Manchurian-type malting variety that gave good yields. Kindred had stem rust resistance, but was moderately susceptible to spot blotch and septoria. It was less susceptible to blight and root rot than Wisconsin 38. It was medium height with weak straw. Kindred L is a reselection made to eliminate blue Manchurian types. Larker, a six-road, semi-smooth on malting barley, was first released in 1961. It was medium maturity with moderate straw strength and medium height. Larker was rust resistant, but susceptible to leaf diseases and loose smut. It was superior to all other malt varieties for kernel plumpness at the time of release. Logan, released by NDSU in 1995, is classed as a nonmalting barley. It is a white allure one, two-row barley similar to Bowman in heading date and plant height and similar to Morix for foliar diseases. It has better yield, test weight, and lodging score, and lower protein, than Bowman and Morix. Lux is a Danish variety. 
Manchurian, a blue allure one malting variety, was released by NDSU in 1922. It had weak to moderate stiff straw and was susceptible to stem rust. It was developed from false stripe virus free stock. Manchuri, also designated Accession No. 871, is a six row barley that may have been first released by NDSU before 1904. It outyielded most of the common types being grown in North Dakota at the time. It had stiffer straw than varieties at the time and a longer head filled with large, plump kernels. Monsuri, also designated Accession No. 172, is a two row barley first released by NDSU about 1905. Maris Otter is an English two-row winter variety commonly used in the production of malt for traditional British beers or as a maltier two-row substitute in any style. It remains popular for craft beer and among homebrewers. Morix, a six-row, white allure one, smooth on malting variety, was released by Minnesota in 1978. Morix, which stands for more extract, is highly resistant to stem rust, moderate to spot blotch, and susceptible to loose smut. Nordal, a Spring Newtons variety from Carlsberg, Sweden, was released in 1971. Nordic, a six-row, colorless allure one feed barley, was released in 1971. It had rough ons and short rachilla hairs. Yield was similar to Dixon, but greater than Larker. Kernel plumpness and test weight was superior to Dixon, but less than Larker. Lodging, spot, and net blotch resistance was similar to Dixon, but it had higher resistance to septoria leaf blotch. It showed less leaf rust symptoms compared to other varieties at the time. Optic Palace Park, a six-row, white allure one, malting barley, was released in 1978. Park had better resistance to leaf spot diseases, spot blotch, net blotch, and septoria leaf blotch than Larker. Plumage Archer is an English malt variety. Pearl Pinnacle, a variety released by the North Dakota Agricultural Experiment Station in 2006, has high yield, low protein, long rachilla hairs, smooth ons, white allure one, medium late maturity, medium height, and strong straw strength. Proctor is a parent cultivar of Maris Otter. Pioneer is a parent cultivar of Maris Otter. Rawson, a variety developed by the NDSU Barley Breeding Program, was released by the North Dakota Agricultural Experiment Station in 2005. Rawson's general characteristics were very large kernels, loose hull, long rachilla hairs, rough ons, white allure one, medium maturity, medium height, and medium straw strength. Robust, a six-row, white allure one malting variety, was released by Minnesota in 1983. Maturity is two days later than Morix. Sue, a selection from Tregal released by NDSU, was a six-row, medium-early variety with white allure one, rough ons, and long rachilla hairs. It was high-yielding with plump kernels. Its disease reaction was similar to Tregal. Stark, a two-row non-malting barley released by NDSU in 1991, has stiff straw and large kernels, and appears best adapted to western North Dakota and adjacent western states. Stark is about one day later and two inches shorter than Bowman, with equal or better test weight. Stark yields about 10% better than Bowman. It is moderately resistant to net and spot blotch, but is susceptible to loose smut, leaf rust and the QCC race of wheat stem rust. Steptoe, a white kerneled, rough on feed variety, was released by Washington State University in 1973. Steptoe is widely adapted and has been one of the highest yielding and most popular six road feed varieties in the inland Pacific Northwest for many years. Tradition, a variety with excellent agronomic performance and malt quality, is well adapted to Minnesota, North Dakota, Idaho, and Montana. Tradition has medium relative maturity, medium short height, and very strong straw. It has a nodding head type, semi smooth ons, long rachilla hairs, and white allure one. Trail, a medium early, rough on, white allure one malting variety, was released by NDSU in 1956. It was resistant to stem rust and had the same reaction to spot blotch and septoria as Kindred. Trail had greater yield and straw strength than Kindred, but had smaller kernel size. Tregal, a high yield, smooth on, six row feed barley, was released by NDSU in 1943. It was medium early with short, stiff straw, erect head, and high resistance to loose smut. Tregal was similar to Kindred for reaction to spot blotch with similar tolerance to septoria. 
Trophy, a six-row, rough-on malting variety with colorless allure one, was released by NDSU in 1964. Similar to Trail and Kindred in plant height, heading date, and test weight, it had a higher percentage of plump kernels. Its yield in North Dakota was greater than Kindred and similar to Trail. Similar to Kindred and Trail, it was resistant to stem rust, but susceptible to loose smut and septoria leaf blotch. It had some field resistance to net blotch. It had greater straw strength than Kindred. Trophy had greater enzymatic activity and quality than Trail. Windick is a Western Australian grain cultivar named after Tommy Windick circa 1840 Yagen is a Western Australian grain cultivar named after Yagen circa 1795 to 1833. Topic: <laughs> Chemistry. H. vulgar contains the phenolics caffeic acid and P. cumuric acid, the ferulic acid 8, 5 diferulic acid, the flavonoids catechin 7 O glucoside, saponarin, catechin, procyanidin B3, procyanidin C2, and prodelphinidin B3, and the alkaloid hordenine. History Barley was one of the first domesticated grains in the Fertile Crescent, an area of relatively abundant water in Western Asia, and near the Nile River of Northeast Africa. The grain appeared in the same time as einkorn and emmer wheat. Wild barley H. Vulgar SSP. Spontaneum ranges from North Africa and Crete in the west, to Tibet in the east. According to some scholars, the earliest evidence of wild barley in an archaeological context comes from the Epipaleolithic at Ohalo II at the southern end of the Sea of Galilee. The remains were dated to about 8500 BCE. Other scholars have written that the earliest evidence comes from Jarma in Kurdistan present-day Iraq. Scholars believe domesticated barley vulgar originally spread from Central Asia to India, Persia, Mesopotamia, Syria and Egypt. Some of the earliest domesticated barley occurs at a ceramic pre-pottery Neolithic sites, in the Near East such as the pre-pottery Neolithic B layers of Tel Abu Herrera, in Syria. By 4200 BCE domesticated barley occurs as far as in eastern Finland and had reached Greece and Italy around the 4th C. BCE, barley has been grown in the Korean peninsula since the early Mumun pottery period circa 1500 to 850 BCE along with other crops such as millet, wheat, and legumes. Barley known as Yava in both Vedic and classical Sanskrit is mentioned many times in Rigveda and other Indian scriptures as one of the principal grains in ancient India. Traces of barley cultivation have also been found in post-Neolithic Bronze Age Harappan civilization 5,700 to 3,300 years before present. In the Pulitzer Prize-winning book Guns, Germs, and Steel, Jared Diamond proposed that the availability of barley, along with other domesticable crops and animals, in southwestern Eurasia significantly contributed to the broad historical patterns that human history has followed over approximately the last 13,000 years, i.e., why Eurasian civilization nations, as a whole, have survived and conquered others. Barley beer was probably one of the first alcoholic drinks developed by Neolithic humans. Barley later on was used as currency. The ancient Sumerian word for barley was Akiti. In ancient Mesopotamia, a stalk of barley was the primary symbol of the goddess Shala. Alongside emmer wheat, barley was a staple cereal of ancient Egypt, where it was used to make bread and beer. The general name for barley is JT, hypothetically pronounced eat. Sma, hypothetically pronounced, Shima, refers to Upper Egyptian barley and is a symbol of Upper Egypt. According to Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 8, barley is one of the seven species of crops that characterize the fertility of the promised land of Canaan, and it has a prominent role in the Israelite sacrifices described in the Pentateuch C.E.G. Numbers chapter 5 verse 15. A religious importance extended into the Middle Ages in Europe, and saw barley's use in justice, via alphitomancy and the corsnid. Rations of barley for workers appear in Linear B tablets in Mycenaean contexts at Gnosis and at Mycenaean Pylos. In mainland Greece, the ritual significance of barley possibly dates back to the earliest stages of the Eleusinian mysteries. The preparatory kaikon or mixed drink of the initiates, prepared from barley and herbs, referred in the Homeric hymn to Demeter, whose name some scholars believe meant, "...barley mother". 
The practice was to dry the barley groats and roast them before preparing the porridge, according to Pliny the Elder's Natural History This produces malt that soon ferments and becomes slightly alcoholic. Pliny also noted barley was a special food of gladiators known as hordiri, barley eaters. However, by Roman times, he added that wheat had replaced barley as a staple. Tibetan barley has been a staple food in Tibetan cuisine since the 5th century CE. This grain, along with a cool climate that permitted storage, produced a civilization that was able to raise great armies. It is made into a flour product called sampa that is still a staple in Tibet. The flour is roasted and mixed with butter and butter tea to form a stiff dough that is eaten in small balls. In medieval Europe, bread made from barley and rye was peasant food, while wheat products were consumed by the upper classes. Potatoes largely replaced barley in Eastern Europe in the 19th century. <laughs> Genetics The genome of barley was sequenced in 2012, due to the efforts of the International Barley Genome Sequencing Consortium and the UK Barley Sequencing Consortium. The genome is composed of seven pairs of nuclear chromosomes recommended designations, 1H, 2H, 3H, 4H, 5H, 6H and 7H, and one mitochondrial and one chloroplastic chromosome, with a total of 5,000 MBP. Abundant biological information is already freely available in several barley databases, the wild barley H, vulgar SSP. Spontaneum found currently in the Fertile Crescent might not be the progenitor of the barley cultivated in Eritrea and Ethiopia, indicating that separate domestication may have occurred in eastern Africa. Production In 2016, world production of barley was 141 million tons, led by the European Union producing 41% of the world total. Russia, Germany, France, and Ukraine were major producers. Cultivation Barley is a widely adaptable crop. It is currently popular in temperate areas where it is grown as a summer crop and tropical areas where it is sown as a winter crop. Its germination time is one to three days. Barley grows under cool conditions, but is not particularly winter hardy. Barley is more tolerant of soil salinity than wheat, which might explain the increase of barley cultivation in Mesopotamia from the 2nd millennium BCE onwards. Barley is not as cold tolerant as the winter wheats Triticum estivum, fall rye cereal, or winter triticale times triticosicale witum, xa camu, but may be sown as a winter crop in warmer areas of Australia and Great Britain. Barley has a short growing season and is also relatively drought tolerant. Topic. Plant diseases This plant is known or likely to be susceptible to barley mild mosaic bimovirus, as well as bacterial blight. It can be susceptible to many diseases, but plant breeders have been working hard to incorporate resistance. The devastation caused by any one disease will depend upon the susceptibility of the variety being grown and the environmental conditions during disease development. Serious diseases of barley include powdery mildew caused by Blumeria graminis f. sp. hordae, leaf scald caused by Rhynchosporium cicalis, barley rust caused by Puccinia hordae, crown rust caused by Puccinia coronata, and various diseases caused by Cochleobolus sativus. Barley is also susceptible to head blight. Topic. Food Topic. Nutrition In a 100 g serving, raw barley provides 352 calories and is a rich source 20% or more of the daily value DV, of essential nutrients, including protein, dietary fiber, the B vitamins, niacin 31% DV, and vitamin B6 20% DV, and several dietary minerals table. Highest nutrient contents are for manganese 63% DV and phosphorus 32% DV table. Raw barley is 78% carbohydrates, 1% fat, 10% protein and 10% water table. Topic: <inaudible> Preparation. Hulled barley or covered barley is eaten after removing the inedible fibrous outer hull. 
Once removed, it is called dehulled barley or pot barley or scotch barley. Considered a whole grain, dehulled barley still has its bran and germ, making it a nutritious and popular health food. Pearl barley or pearled barley is dehulled barley which has been steam processed further to remove the bran. It may be polished, a process known as pearling. Dehulled or pearl barley may be processed into a variety of barley products, including flour, flakes similar to oatmeal, and grits. Barley meal, a wholemeal barley flour lighter than wheat meal but darker in color, is used in porridge and gruel in Scotland. Barley meal gruel is known as saic in the Arab world. With a long history of cultivation in the Middle East, barley is used in a wide range of traditional Arabic, Assyrian, Israelite, Kurdish, and Persian foodstuffs including kashkok, kashk and murray. Barley soup is traditionally eaten during Ramadan in Saudi Arabia. Cholent or hameen in Hebrew is a traditional Jewish stew often eaten on Sabbath, in a variety of recipes by both Mizrachi and Ashkenazi Jews, with barley cited throughout the Hebrew Bible in multiple references. In Eastern and Central Europe, barley is also used in soups and stews such as reset. In Africa, where it is a traditional food plant, it has the potential to improve nutrition, boost food security, foster rural development, and support sustainable land care. The six row variety beer is cultivated in Orkney, Shetland, Caithness, and the Western Isles in the Scottish Highlands and Islands. When milled into barameal, it is used locally in bread, biscuits, and the traditional barameal bannock. Topic. Health implications According to Health Canada and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, consuming at least 3 grams per day of barley beta glucan or 0.75 grams per serving of soluble fiber can lower levels of blood cholesterol, a risk factor for cardiovascular diseases. Eating whole grain barley, as well as other grains with lots of fiber, improves regulation of blood sugar, i.e., reduces blood glucose response to a meal. Consuming breakfast cereals containing barley over weeks to months also improved cholesterol levels and glucose regulation, like wheat, rye, and their hybrids and derivatives. Barley contains gluten, which makes it an unsuitable grain for consumption by people with gluten related disorders, such as celiac disease, non celiac gluten sensitivity, and wheat allergy sufferers, among others. Nevertheless, some wheat allergy patients can tolerate barley or rye. Beverages Topic. Alcoholic beverages Barley is a key ingredient in beer and whiskey production. Two-row barley is traditionally used in German and English beers. Six-row barley was traditionally used in U.S. beers, but both varieties are in common usage now. Distilled from green beer, whiskey has been made primarily from barley in Ireland and Scotland, while other countries have used more diverse sources of alcohol, such as the more common corn, rye and wheat in the USA. In the US, a grain type may be identified on a whiskey label if that type of grain constitutes 51% or more of the ingredients and certain other conditions are satisfied. About 25% of the United States production of barley is used for malting, for which barley is the best suited grain. Barley wine is a style of strong beer from the English brewing tradition. Another alcoholic drink known by the same name, enjoyed in the 18th century, was prepared by boiling barley in water, then mixing the barley water with white wine and other ingredients, such as borage, lemon, and sugar. In the 19th century, a different barley wine was made prepared from recipes of ancient Greek origin. Topic. Non-alcoholic beverages Non-alcoholic drinks such as barley water and roasted barley tea have been made by boiling barley in water. In Italy, barley is also sometimes used as coffee substitute, café d'orzo coffee of barley. This drink is obtained from ground, roasted barley and it is prepared as an espresso it can be prepared using percolators, filter machines or cafetiers. It became widely used during the fascist period and World War II, as Italy was affected by embargo and struggled to import coffee. It was also a cheaper option for poor families often grown and roasted at home in the period. Afterwards, it was promoted and sold as a coffee substitute for children. Nowadays, it is experiencing a revival and it can be considered some Italians' favorite alternative to coffee when, for health reasons, caffeine drinks are not recommended. Other uses 
Topic: Animal feed. Half of the United States barley production is used as livestock feed. Barley is an important feed grain in many areas of the world not typically suited for maize production, especially in northern climates—for example, northern and eastern Europe. Barley is the principal feed grain in Canada, Europe, and in the northern United States. A finishing diet of barley is one of the defining characteristics of Western Canadian beef used in marketing campaigns. As of 2014, an enzymatic process can be used to make a high protein fish feed from barley, which is suitable for carnivorous fish such as trout and salmon. Topic: <laughs> Algestatic. Barley straw in England is placed in mesh bags and floated in fish ponds or water gardens to help prevent algal growth without harming pond plants and animals. Barley straw has not been approved by the EPA for use as a pesticide and its effectiveness as an algae regulator in ponds has produced mixed results with either more efficacy against phytoplankton algae versus mat forming algae or no significant change during university testing in the US and the UK. Topic Measurement Barley grains were used for measurement in England, there being three or four barleycorns to the inch and four or five poppy seeds to the barleycorn. The statute definition of an inch was three barleycorns, although by the 19th century, this had been superseded by standard inch measures. This unit still persists in the shoe sizes used in Britain and the USA as modern studies show. The actual length of a kernel of barley varies from as short as 4 to 7 mm, 0.16 to 0.28 in, to as long as 12 to 15 mm, 0.47 to 0.59 in, depending on the cultivar. Older sources claimed the average length of a grain of barley being 0.345 in 8.8 mm. The barleycorn was known as arpa in Turkish, and the feudal system in Ottoman Empire employed the term arpalik, or barley money, to refer to a second allowance made to officials to offset the costs of fodder for their horses. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ornamental. A new stabilized variegated variety of H. vulgar, billed as H. vulgar variegate, has been introduced for cultivation as an ornamental and pot plant for pet cats to nibble. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Cultural. In English folklore, the figure of John Barleycorn in the folk song of the same name is a personification of barley and of the alcoholic beverages made from it, beer and whiskey. In the song, John Barleycorn is represented as suffering attacks, death, and indignities that correspond to the various stages of barley cultivation, such as reaping and malting. See also Barley portal Barley wine References Topic Notes Topic Bibliography McGee, Harold, nineteen eighty six. On Food and Cooking The Science and Lore of the Kitchen. Onwin. ISBN O four 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 O two seven seven five. Topic External Links Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Barley. Encyclopædia Britannica, 3, 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. Barley Information for Growers, Extension.